Welcome back. So now let's quickly tell you what uh, uh, many people would, uh, in fact, they were saved today. Otherwise, some would have called them prophets of doom. But uh, here is what Adam Nobel, he's an atmospheric scientist, had to say. Uh, he said that, uh, let's quickly put up those graphics. What did he say? He says, major cyclone landfall in Mumbai is a rare event. Colleagues and I have been studying a risk of a major cyclone landfall in Mumbai for several years. The work was originally motivated by Amitav Ghosh. Ghosh asked me if there could actually be something like Hurricane Sandy in Mumbai. This is their conversation, uh, Adam Sobel's conversation with Amitav Ghosh before that book was written. Of course, Adam Sobel himself has done a lot of work on cyclones uh, in the aftermath of uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy. Then uh, Adam also says he asked, that is Amitav Ghosh asks, if the probability was increasing due to global warming led to a series of wide-ranging conversations, some such conversations are in Amitabh's book, The Great Derangement. They inspired me and my colleagues to do some research and our research indicates that a truly major cyclone is possible in Mumbai. He says it is possible in Mumbai and look what we have here. What was spoken in 2016 or subsequently uh, could have become the reality. At least it could have spelled doom. Amitabh Ghosh as well as Adam Sobel uh, both are with us. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Let me begin with you, Mr. Amitav Ghosh. The great derangement, thankfully, never came true. Otherwise, as, as I said in the introduction, you would have been dubbed by a few as, as, as a prophet of doom. But this is a, a definite possibility. You know, your work and Mr. Sobel's work gives us a sense that uh, while we thank our stars today, we cannot leave everything to God. This is a possibility. Oh, oh yes, absolutely. Well, uh, thank you for having me. It's a uh, great pleasure to be speaking with you. Uh, yes, it absolutely is a possibility. Look, uh, you know, I don't want to be a prophet of doom in any sense. <laughs> but uh, anyone who looks at the reality of climate change knows that very bad things uh, uh, are going to happen and are perfectly possible. And that's why I initiated that conversation with, uh, uh, with Adam, because I read his book on Hurricane Sandy, and I started asking myself uh, whether this was possible. You know, I'm a Bengali. Uh, I've, uh, I have a, a very long familiarity with cyclones. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just wondered. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Ghosh, please carry on. I can hear you. Uh, okay, yes. So th that's why I initiated that conversation with Adam. And, you know, I must say I'm so glad I did because we've had a very productive uh, kind of uh, back and forth or collaboration or correspondence or whatever, uh, 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 whatever you like. And it's a, it's a particular pleasure for me as a, as a writer, as a novelist, uh, you know, to be uh, uh, collaborating in a way with a scientist like Adam. Hmm. 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 Uh, Adam, you know... Uh there is a one very important question that while we were researching on this story, uh, a lot of my colleagues uh, ended up asking me this. Is this what you call climate change? Is this what is climate change? Right. First of all, thanks for having me. And thank you, Amitabh, for the kind words. The pleasure is all mine. Um, but to answer the question, um, you know, the, the first thing... Two, two important things to say, I think. The first one is that even without climate change, Mumbai could have a cyclone, could have had a cyclone, and probably did mm. in the distant past have serious mm. ones. We know it had, in 1948, one that was, I think, worse for the city than the one today, um, but uh, probably much worse ones in the past. And, and our study, um, our research study, did not yet account for climate change. So even without that, Mumbai has some risk of cyclone. The other thing that's important to say, though, is that as best as we can understand and predict now, climate change is increasing the risk of cyclones in the Arabian Sea and thus to Mumbai also, such that an event like this is becoming more probable. I can't put precise numbers on how much more probable, but more probable. And the thing that really scares me is not an event like this, which in the end wasn't so bad for Mumbai. Mumbai really uh, dodged the bullet on this one. But, but uh, what we were trying to consider in our, our research was the possibility of a much more serious one 
with a very strong winds and a large storm surge, which could be maybe even more catastrophic than the flood of 2005. No, it's interesting that you mentioned the floods of uh, 2005. Who can forget that for a city like Mumbai? Now, Mr. Ghosh, uh, you know, in terms of our political response, it is often restricted, and I'm, I'm only talking on and concentrating on Mumbai. It is only restricted to, uh, you know, improving your stormwater drains. The infrastructure conversation revolves only around uh, a big event, a big natural occurrence. And otherwise, there is very little movement. Do you think now it cannot be taken so lightly? Our political response cannot be taken lightly. Oh, absolutely. See, the thing about Mumbai uh, is that uh, Mumbai is, is vulnerable because of the way that it has grown. You know, and this is not just in recent times. Mumbai has grown since the late 18th century. I mean, the British decided to found a city there because they liked to build on islands uh, because they felt it was safer for them. Uh, but uh, what they started doing after that is that they connected, uh, you know, these six or seven islands into this huge peninsula. Now, you know, one thing we know about the rising seas is that the seas will, uh, will take back their own. And whether it's through uh, sea level rise or, with, uh, or, or cyclones, you know, that's what we are seeing around the world right now. So when Adam says that, uh, you know, the storm that hit in 1948 uh, uh, was stronger than the one that uh, hit today, we have to remember that in 1948, uh, uh, Mumbai's population was what? Maybe two or three million. Uh, today, it's, uh, you know, something like 20 million. And especially if you take the greater uh, Mumbai area, it's so much, uh, it's such an immense population. There's so much build up. All the drainage channels have been blocked. So, uh, uh, you know, even a very minor event could be a, a really a, a, a catastrophe for Mumbai. Mm. We've seen what, uh, how, uh, how Mumbai has suffered because of these rain bomb events, which are again, uh, you know, uh, they carry a sort of climate, finger, a climate change fingerprint on them. Correct. So the, uh, Mumbai has multiple vulnerabilities, and all these vulnerabilities should be addressed. You remember that after 2005, when you had that terrible ro rain bomb event, there were all sorts of uh, commissions and inquiries set up. Uh, what did they do? They put in uh, some sort of radar sensing uh, equipment uh, on some buildings, and then it was found that those, uh, that equipment doesn't even work. So, um, you know, absolutely, in terms of addressing these issues in the long run, there has to be a major concerted uh, uh, political uh, uh, effort, but that mm. political effort has to work in concert with civil mm -hmm. society. Sure, mm. sure. Mr. Sobel, you know, I, I was meaning to ask you this question. A lot of, a lot of experts today uh, seem to suggest that uh, you can't be taking your, uh, the, the western coast uh, very, very lightly. I mean, so far, it's the, it's the East Coast uh, states that have been uh, facing the brunt of these cyclones, and they seem quite prepared, as Mr. Ghosh also said, uh, being a Bengali. Uh, he knows what cyclone is like. Mumbai is not prepared. It's not seen so many cyclones. Do you think the time has right. now come to uh, send this message across scientifically through the scientific community with the help of research that it's not, it's not something which is unlikely? In fact, it's very much likely. So we have to prepare our West Coast as well as we have done, uh, you know, the job we have done with the East. I think that's right. I mean, historically, uh, of course, it's true. The East Coast has seen many more cyclones than the West has. Um, and as a consequence, it's better prepared. That's just human nature. If something keeps happening, then you get better prepared. And the, the last couple of major storms that have hit um, India's East Coast, including Ampan just now, the, the immediate disaster response was quite good. The evacuations were very effective and relatively few lives were lost com compared to events in the past, and that's great progress. The West Coast, as you say, the, the risk is low uh, historically, and so there's less preparation. And, and this is why when Amitav asked me a few years ago if, the, if this could happen in Mumbai, it was a question that immediately got me very engaged because much like my own city of New York uh, City, where um, historically we really don't get uh, major hurricanes, as we call them, um, uh, although they can come kind of close, but we hadn't got one, and then it did happen. So, and we were somewhat, in some ways, prepared for it, and in other ways, not prepared. Mm. And so, the biggest disasters can happen when the risk is low, mm. but not zero, because that's when people aren't prepared. 
Cool. So with that being the case, and climate change increasing the probability of severe storms on the West Coast, I think absolutely um, the West Coast needs to prepare. And I hope that this event will help uh, instigate that. Absolutely. Adam Sobel as well as Amitabh Ghosh, uh, you guys dodged a bullet today. Uh, let's just hope your book never comes true. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Ghosh as well as uh, Mr. Sobel for Thank joining you. us on the show.